You might be at a point where your event doesn't seem to be getting traction any longer, or this might even be your first dinner ever. Either way, giving the best appeal is critical. Today I'm going to share with you the secrets I've learned to making a great appeal. Stay tuned. It was 2013 and I was asked by a nonprofit in Austin, Texas to do the appeal for funding at their local dinner. This dinner wasn't anything out of the ordinary except that they followed my dinner model to the letter. They had an inspirational update from the organizational leader, an informative and a challenging appeal, and a heartwarming program. When it came time to do the close, I asked the table host to pass out to the guests the giving envelopes, and I meticulously began to go through the envelope. Normally, I'll go over ways to give that night and over time. I even gave this audience an example of ways they could make a faith-stretching gift and a commitment. But when I got to the monthly commitment section, instead of giving options like I normally do of 100, 250, and 500, I mistakenly said 2,500 instead of 500 a month. I tried to recover by making light of the moment by saying, yes, in case anyone wants to give 2,500 a month, that option is available as well. That got a nice laugh from the audience. At the end of the night, I sat with the local team counting money, and lo and behold, there was a commitment for $2,500 a month. If you're following with me, that's $30,000 over a year. The leader told me the donor was capable of making such a commitment, but never had. The next day, the donor himself confirmed that the commitment was not a mistake. He felt led to give that gift due to my putting that option out there. Never before nor since have I made a mistake like that but, that, but for that one moment, that mistake moved someone to make a major commitment to that organization. It confirmed for me that how important the appeal was and that indeed words matter. I've done over 2,500 dinners in the last 38 years and I believe I've got the secrets to a winning event appeal. Let me share those with you now. Secret number one. Craft an inspirational update. Out of the box, immediately after dinner, I found that it's imperative to accomplish a few key goals. Identify the problem that caused your organization to be created. Talk about the solution. That should be your organization and what you do. Identify what programs or projects you perform in an effort to solve the problem and identify next steps or what I refer to as accelerators that will get you further down the road. I call that portion the inspirational update. I've outlined this update by answering the following questions. Why do we exist? Who we are? What we do? How do we do them? And where are we going? Those elements are critical to your inspirational update. All these things need to be communicated by the leader of the organization, president, executive director, board president, in 13 minutes or less. Not too long, but not too short either. Long rambling presentations will lose the attention of the audience, but messages too short may leave the audience guessing as to what you hope to accomplish. It's been said that the history, mission, vision, and programs add credibility and give the organization validity. However, it's the future that people give to. So outlining three to four accelerators that will take the organization to the next level is the perfect balance to capture attention, but not bore people. Each accelerator must be dynamic, forward thinking, and above all, measurable. For example, if your organization provides water filters to communities in impoverished nations, one of your accelerators could be provide 1,500 water filters to 15 villages in Africa so the villagers will finally have clean water to drink. If you're a homeless shelter, you might set as an accelerator to feed 2,500 meals this Thanksgiving day so that their holiday will be a little brighter. If you're a faith-based organization reaching college students with the gospel and you want to start new movements on colleges and universities, your accelerator could be 
launch 25 new movements in the next 12 months and bring the gospel to students in need of the good news of Jesus. All these are inspirational and forward thinking, but more importantly, very specific and very measurable. Although they're specific, gifts given to them don't have to be designated to the accelerators, but are shared as give to things like this. That makes them undesignated. Each accelerator should have a price tag so that people understand how your goal for the evening is established. Secret number two, assemble an informative and a challenging appeal. Every event audience is made up of two kinds of people, emotional givers and logical givers. Emotional givers will give at the drop of a hat. They could eat their meal, hear a story of a changed life, and be ready to give immediately. Logical givers need to have a rationale for their gift, and they need to be worked up in their giving. They need evidence in a case for why they should give. If that case has not been made, they won't give. In my family, I'm the emotional giver. I still cry at movies and will give to any child who comes to the door selling something for school or sports. My wife, on the other hand, is a logical giver. She needs a good reason to give. After years of testing, I discovered that the best way to capture the attention of the emotional and the logical giver is to present the ways to give early in the program. Letting guests process the options presented and complete a response device at the end of the night after a heartwarming program and including a captivating and compelling message. Many organizations believe that they need to sneak up on donors in order to get them to give. I found it just the opposite. When I first watched other people's dinners, the organization saved the ask for the very end of the night. I would survey the crowd and see that everyone was sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for the gotcha. They never got to enjoy or appreciate the program. I changed all that and broke down the barriers by sharing the opportunities to give very early in the evening, immediately following the inspirational update. This gave the logical givers time to process. Remember, emotional givers will give almost any time. I tell the attendees to look for me at the end of the night and know it was time to give. People seem receptive to the fact that I was preparing them for what would happen during the evening rather than thinking I had to surprise them. In the appeal, I restate the accelerators mentioned in the inspirational update and the total goal for the night. It always seems helpful to balance that out, the total budget, including staff salaries, so that they see what percentage of their budget you hope to raise tonight. From there, I show them what could be accomplished with certain size gifts. For example, I say specifically a gift of $600 or $50 a month will purchase 12 water filters for two families in Africa. A gift of $1,200 or $100 a month will purchase 120 meals at Thanksgiving, and so on, sharing a $2,400, $4,800, $12,000, and $24,000 option. I found that about six to eight examples is the optimal amount. Don't do too many, you'll lose your audience. Not long ago, I discovered that if I offered people an option that was evenly divisible by 12, that's why I said 600 or 50 a month, I could not only get a single gift tonight or annually, but I could enlist monthly givers. And who doesn't need more monthly givers? I then challenged people to consider what they were thinking of giving on their way here and then to ask them if there was a more challenging or face-stretching amount that they would consider as the program continues and to give that amount at the end of the evening. I remind them to look for me after the main speaker and move on with the program. Secret number three, orchestrate a heartwarming program. At this point, most great programs show ways that the organization is literally changing the lives of men, women, and children. This is done through one to three minute videos, three minute live testimonials, including an endorsement of the organization from a current owner and a captivating 19-minute message from a guest speaker. Not a big name speaker, but a compelling speaker. An important tip is every minute over two hours and 15 minutes will cost you $1,000 in lost revenue. Yes, that's true. Each of these elements are essential ingredients to the success of a program and the giving, just as the right ingredients are essential to baking a recipe for a cake or a pastry. Secret number four, devise a meticulous close. I refer to the close as meticulous because it should be carefully orchestrated and each detail should be painstakingly mastered. 
Coming off the captivating main message, it's easy to simply instruct the table host to pass out packets with envelopes inside that they were given at registration. Each guest, not each couple, should get an envelope making each feel important and special. As the envelope's near reaching everyone, it should be announced that I realize that you may be tempted to start filling out the envelope, but if you will help me out, please wait until I've had time to read through the envelope before you complete it. Every study I've ever seen says that people processing a gift need, no matter what education level, to have the card or envelope explained to them in great detail or you'll run the risk of them filling it out incorrectly. It might sound parochial, but it's necessary. I normally list three elements on the giving envelope card. Gift tonight, gift over 90 days, or gift over time. And that gift over time can be single, quarterly, or monthly. I recommend a special section specifically for monthly giving options and indicate those options as follows. 100 a month, 250 a month, 500 a month, and other. It's important to know that when I read these elements, I don't read them as options. I've found that those who read them as, as options tend to say or between the elements. That's fine, but significantly more money is raised when using the word and between the elements. A gift tonight of X dollars and a monthly gift of $100 a month. When I'm done going through the elements, I give people an example of an and gift. Ladies and gentlemen, let's say you're feeling led to give a gift of $2,500. How could you do that? Well, you can go to the tonight element and write in $100 and go to the monthly section and write in $2,500 on the other line. And we'll add that up for you and see that your commitment is $2,500. And then I say, yes, we're going to need gifts of $2,500, but we're also going to need gifts of $5,000, $10,000, $25,000 or more to accomplish our goal of X dollars. Donors want to meet expectations when, when not given expectations, they will always default to a lesser amount. But when given a larger option, they will lean that direction or at least give more than they intended when they walked in. After reading the personal information section, I ask them to begin completing the envelope. With faith-based organizations, I pray before having them fill out the envelope. The key at this point is to have strings music, not vocals, playing in the background, but never, ever, ever leave the podium. The guests see you as their moderator. Don't walk away, even for a short time, and don't get caught up in any, any conversations or people will begin leaving, often without completing their envelope. Be certain to give people adequate time to complete the envelope and then when about 50% of the room looks done, ask the host to pass around the original 9 by 12 envelopes that their guests can put the little envelope in the big envelope. Then instruct the host to seal it when everyone is done and hold it in the air so that ushers, designated volunteers can collect the packets. However, stay on the stage until you're certain that 90% or more of the packets are collected. I always tell the person doing the appeal to wait until it feels like you've been up there forever, even excruciatingly long, and then stay a little longer. Don't let anyone rush you off until you're certain people are done. Statistics have proven that 99.99% of the people who leave with an incomplete envelope never send it back, out of sight, out of mind. Then go on with the remainder of the program, which shouldn't be much more. Your event should never revolve around the appeal. The event should be about friend raising, identifying new and building old friends. But when you get to the point where you present an opportunity for involvement, the event should shift to that being the most important thing. When you reach the point where it's time to give, people should be energized and uplifted and ready to give. It's been said when fruit's ripe, you just need to pick it, not wrench it off with a crowbar. People shouldn't be exhausted from a long program and either ready to hit the bathroom or the parking lot. The appeal should be a joyous time where people are given an opportunity to give to something great. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button below and add a comment. If you have used some of these secrets, how'd they work for you? Or if you feel my advice better prepares you for the appeal, let me know that as well too. As a fun exercise to let me know you got this far in the video, type the word appeal in the comments section. If you're interested in joining me in making a positive impact 
on our world and even for eternity, please hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. If you want to find out what to do and say during a presentation, watch this video and raise more money than ever. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.